Hi there, it's me, Good Times with Gabe, and today I will be interviewing my manager slash mentor, James <laughs> Welcome to the show, James. Hey, thanks so much, Gabe. I'm happy to be here. That's funny. Okay, well, we're going to get started then. Time to rock and roll. Yeah, of course. That's how it usually is. <laughs> <laughs> Procedures aren't bad, are they? No. That's right. Not at all. Okay. I love it. All right. What do you got for me? What inspired you? to start the biggest internet show on the planet? Um, you know, uh, back in the day, there was a, um, there was a uh, TV show like a long time ago. It was called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And it was a, it was a TV show. Uh, and when I lived in Florida, I got asked by one of the biggest radio stations in the world to be the fashion guy on it. And uh, so I was on the radio for several months you know, being the fashion guy and people would call in and ask questions and everything. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is fun. Like, I think I'd like to do this. Uh, and then I just started uh, guesting on other radio shows. And then I contacted the radio station I'm on now, W4CY, and asked them if I could do a show. And they said yes. And that's how it started. It just started out kind of like as a whim. I never thought I would be a radio show host or a TV show host. It just kind of like happened. And I had a good time. And I, since I had a good time, I thought, okay, let's do it. I like being what? in entertainment, so I just did it. There's nothing wrong with that. You That's right. Do what you gotta do. That's you right. I love it. Very bad stuff. Yeah, I don't do anything bad. <laughs> in your opinion. Yes, in my opinion. Your opinion. Never. Yeah, other people might not think that. <laughs> yeah, of course. <sighs> okay, what you got for me? Okay, okay, okay. let's just keep going. What we'll keeps the show? going the way that it does um you know we we work hard at it first of all it's the jimmy star show with ron russell um so ron russell is my co-host he's very very funny um so i think a lot of people tune in because they never know exactly what he's going to say and uh, i'm kind of like the more serious one on the show and you know to keep it going we work very hard at it y'all just like you you always have to try to find good guests and you have to try and get out and promote it. And you got to try and build a fan base so the fans tune in every time. And uh, so it's a lot of work. Um, but it's also like a lot of fun. And everybody's always gunning for me since we're the number one show in the world. Everybody's always gunning for me. And that kind of like drives me also to, to, you know, stay on top as long as I can. And the biggest thing, though, is just to have fun. I like I get to have fun. I get to talk to like people who I've always, you know, liked or like their movies or I like their music or I like something about them. And so it makes it a lot of fun. Oh, well, it sounds great. But if people want to hear more about Ron Russell, they call it the Ron Russell show with Jimmy Starr. So <laughs> about that, it's the Jimmy Starr with Ron Russell show. That's because I actually had the show for four years before I met Ron. Um, and so like I started out, it started out just as the Jimmy Starr show. And then when I met Ron, he came on and then we added the with Ron Russell. Because I had already branded the Jimmy Star Show, and I didn't want to lose the title. Uh, um, so you just so. added the quick with your own Russell, and so I knew yes. we're all good now. Plus, I get a movie like in like if you watch old movies and stuff in the old days, they would always say movies. They'd put the stars of the movie, and at the end, they would say with whoever the biggest stars were. And so that way, it kind of like makes him the biggest star. I see. Okay, next question. You want to talk more about you being a famous clothing designer? We can. I um, That's how I actually got into the entertainment industry in the first place. I started making really cool clothes, and they were all one of a kind, and I only made one of them. And I had three stores in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and uh, um, I made one of a kind cool clothes. And, and I used to go to different uh, places. Uh, I would go to like um, conventions and comic cons and things like that. And I'd give away the clothes to the famous people and uh, to get pictures with them in them. And that's how people found out about me. They saw the famous people wearing my clothes. Uh, and then when they saw the famous people wearing my clothes, they wanted them. And then they would all come shopping. And that's how I built the whole business. But I dressed all kinds of cool people. Like I dressed everybody from the movie Hellraiser. And I've dressed like Carmen Electra and Dave Navarro and like a whole bunch of people from the walking dead and um i don't know pretty much every horror movie star in the world expose elton john like just all kinds of really big and famous people and that's kind of how i got into entertainment that put 
put me into the next level of where I'm at now. It was a blast. I had a good time. I don't know who I would have done, though, that you would know, because most of them are older. But everybody in the horror movie industry has, has worn my stuff. Like, if they're really big and famous in horror, they've probably worn my clothes. And that's my favorite thing is horror movies. Does that involve authors like Stephen King? No, but authors like Clive Barker, um, who's like the second biggest horror. Stephen King's number one and Clive Barker's number two. But I've never actually met Stephen King, unfortunately. Hey, maybe you will. Maybe. Oh, I will. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody, everybody is just like you, you know, like you're like interviewing me now. And like, you know, a year from now, you'll probably be interviewing like Lady Gaga or somebody like really huge. So it's just, just got to like keep building it as you go along and, and never be afraid to try things. Like I've got brass balls. So like I might not get everything I want, but I'm not afraid to go after everything I want and just see what happens. And then eventually you'll get it if you keep trying. You see, this is why you're my mentor. That's right. You throw enough shit up on the wall, something's going to stick. <laughs> Very weird analogy, but I'll take it. You gotta love it. You don't have to. Choose to. That's right. Now, you know, one of the coolest PR companies in the world. Mm -hmm. What inspired it? Actually, my partner, who you know pretty well, is Eileen Shapiro. And actually, it was her idea to start a PR company. It was not mine. Um, we went on a great ghost hunt um, uh, that we made our comic book out of, Celebrity Ghost Hunters. And uh, we went on this great like uh, ghost hunt. We had a really good time, and it ended up that all the people on the ghost hunt, we all met each other through the same publicist. And Eileen contacted me after we got done, and she said, you know, do publicists come to you all the time and ask you for help? And I said, yes. And she said, me too. And she's like, we should start our own company. And I said, okay. And so we started our own company and we were successful like immediately because we both had a lot of, knew a lot of people who needed press and we're both really good at what we do and we get along great. And uh, so we started it and now we're four like years later, I think. Um, and we're working with some really big, fun people, several who you've met because you've interviewed them on your show. Mm -hmm, of course. But your aunt is super cool. I mean, your grandmother's super cool. Your aunt. I don't know where I came up with that. Jesus. It's Nana. It's always Nana. It's, it's Nana uh, or Glamma. Okay. Or the Glamma? Glamma. Okay. That's funny. Okay. I like Nana better. <laughs> <laughs> and now because you started the business with her, you're stuck here editing my videos and watching them and controlling them. Yes. Now I see. So I'm in the. I'm. I'm actually a part of future in the making of the next great journalist, and the next great interviewer. You know, in ten years, I'm going to be able to say when you're like on major television and interviewing like all these huge people, I'll be able to say, see, I knew him when he first started out. I was like the engineer of his show, you know, and now he's like this big, huge superstar, and uh, it'll be fun. Yeah, hundred percent. Do you want to do, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to be an interviewer? Do you also want to like be in movies and that kind of stuff too? Or what's your, what's your like ultimate, like, what would yeah. you like to do? My main goal is to be an actor because okay. I think that's a lot of fun. I can give you a bit of money for the future because I plan to go to a good college. And then you get to say how I had my movie in this name or I had my name in this movie or show. That's good. Okay. I've and been in a bunch of them. To know your name and get inspired by you and start the whole next generation, even though technically I am this generation. Yes, you are. But start now, you influence the next generation. Well, your 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 Nana and I are working on a bunch of films, so hopefully we'll get them all financed, and then we'll be able to get, any films that need children's roles. We'll get you in. Of course, because I'm a natural. That's absolutely you are. Okay, well, next question. What was your best and most fun interview? John Barrowman. So John Barrowman was in, did you ever you ever heard of the TV show? Um, what's the TV show? Doctor Who? Have you ever heard of Doctor Who? I think I've heard of Doctor Who before. Like, I don't know what it's about, but I've heard the name. Doctor Who is like a British show, and it's like a about a time traveling, you know, doctor who's like kind of like a su superhero and saves the world. And so John Behrman was a feature, was on that show a lot, and he was so popular on it that he got his own show called uh, 
I forgot what it was called. I have the action figure. He got his own show, and then when he got his own show, uh, it ran for a few seasons, and then he was on um, Arrow. Have you ever seen Arrow? About the no. Green Arrow? Well, he's the, I like superhero stuff, so I like I watch all that stuff. And so then he was on Arrow. So we actually had him on our show, and he was our number one interview. It hit 10 million plays. 10 million? Yeah, so that's our best show that we've ever had. Most of our shows get between two and five million, but he got 10 million. You're here acting like, oh, two to five million. I'm lucky <laughs> if I get 300 views. <sighs> Yeah, it's but like, you're only oh, like you're like six shows into it. I'm 14 years into it, so there's a big difference. Yeah, I guess 300 isn't bad. Of 300 is good. Okay, now what was your worst and driest interview? Oh, I have to give you my second worst because one of my worst is one of our clients. <laughs> it's I'm like, oh, sure. he's not my client. We can say. <laughs> Um, so I don't have too many that are terrible. You know what? We like shows. Uh, the best shows are shows where people get into a conversation and they don't just say, oh, did you see me in this movie and that movie and this movie? But they actually have a conversation where you say something and then the, the guest says something and you go back for, you know, back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I'm not sure who the, exactly who the worst one was. You know, we do, we have several shows that only got like, you know, between like two and 500,000 plays probably. So there's a whole bunch of them. Um, but we do have had some guests that, that just haven't been that good because they don't give you good answers. You know, when you're an interviewer, you don't want somebody to just give you like a one word answer. Like you say, Oh, you know, what's your favorite color? And they say blue, you know, instead of saying, Oh, my favorite color is blue because like it's the color of the sky or I don't know, some stupid crap, but something, you know, but when people give you one, so anybody who ever gives you a one word answer, they're the worst ones. My favorite color is black because if you screw up, you get that color. So it doesn't matter if you screw up. You're getting it anyway. There you go. Actually, black and red are my favorite colors. That's why my color, I'm wearing black and red and my and my company uh, colors for the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell that's black, red, and white. Black, black, red, and white. Well, if you can look at my wall, it's um, a black zigzag with orange. It looks like Charlie Brown's. Yes. Shirt, except I didn't plan for it to be like that. It just happened that way. Is it a lightning yeah. bolt or is it just a zigzag? Well, the zigzag is on chalkboard black, so I can write on my walls. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Do you do that a lot, write on your walls? Um, not really. I have, like, these two walls at my door where it's, like, just completely open so I can write the stuff there. Like, I okay. use it to write down my passwords and stuff because I'm always rechanging them because I forget. Oh, I always forget mine too, but I write them. I have books now. I have a book and I write everything down in it. And I literally, on my desk, I have like 15 legal pads. I have a different legal pad for everything, like so I can keep all my little notes, but it makes everything a mess. But also, then I have my, when I get bored, I have my Pac Man. <laughs> yeah, Pac Man! <laughs> Gotta be great, just like, oh, I'm bored. Um, let me go here. Sometimes you will. Some, yes. Yeah, sometimes you know you need to just take a break and rejuvenate. So you play the game for fifteen minutes, and then you like, then you're good, and then you're ready to go back to work again. Honestly, if it were Pac-Man, though, I'd be so frustrated I can't go back to work. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not a bad, hard. Uh, I'm not. See, I'm old school, so it's not hard for me. But I'm. I'm not that good at it either, though. But like, I'm not really like a big gamer. I like a lot of the old games from when I was like, you know. 18, 17, and 18 is when, like, I was, video games were kind of popular for me. But they don't even, you can't even play the games I used to play, because I used to play, like, Robotronics was my favorite game. Robotronics, Joust, and Star Wars, like, when you fly the, like, X-Wing fighter things and shoot everybody. Those are, like, my three favorite games, and I don't think you can even get those games anymore. <laughs> well, what, um... Were they on? Like, what platform? They weren't on platforms. We didn't have platforms, but we actually played video games from video game machines. You know, like, we would go to arcades and play video games and stuff. Kind of oh, like they... So they're like the arcade versions. Yeah, they're like arcade versions, yeah. Like Mario at first. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I like Mario, too. Actually, uh, Ron has a Nintendo Switch, so he plays, he plays games, but primarily he only plays Zelda. Switch is the best. So. He loves Zelda. <laughs> Does he play like the original or is he playing like the newest version? He's playing uh something about the wild. 
Oh, Breath of the Wild is so much fun, but it's yeah. so frustrating. Because there's so many secrets in that game. Like, when my brother and me play Mario games, like, he's checking every... Or Mario, Legend of Zelda, it doesn't matter what you're playing. He checks every single place. Because he's always thinking there's a secret. So, uh, Ron's almost finished with it. He's like, he's like uh, all I have to do is one more thing, and he finishes the whole game. So now he's not finishing it. So now he just goes back and plays other things because he doesn't want to end it because then he doesn't have a game to play because he doesn't really like you know any of the other one, any other games. Well, you know what? Even when you beat that game, you can actually re-go back and fight Ganon because that, for some reason, doesn't even solve the issue. Uh, oh, really? The wild? Yeah, it doesn't even solve the issue. Like, it will pretend like nothing just happens. Oh, I have to tell him that. Even if you do that, like, there's still a ton more of the game. You gotta, um, rescue all the fairy fountains, collect all the best armor, you know, upgrade all your gear, find all and complete all the temples. Like, there's still so much to do after. Even then, when you're done with all that, find the best horse and just flex on your friends, you know. I like love it. Is that, uh, that, was that one of your favorite games then, Zelda? Um, yeah, I've spent over 96 hours playing it. <laughs> oh, Ron spends like five hours. A w yeah, he spends about that. He spent at least that much. So, how, what do you play on? Um, well, I have my PC, which I usually do my interviews on. I have my Switch. My yeah, phone. that's what he plays. And I've been playing my 3DS more and more recently. Cause oh, I, I like that. I don't have one of those, but I like those. I always wanted one. I always wanted a, 3, a Nintendo 3DS thing. I thought that would be fun, especially when you travel or you're on an airplane or something. Yeah. Those are my platforms, but good news. I'll be getting a new PC soon. So there you go. Yay. And that's when I'll finally be able to start recording my gaming for real. I'm going to give this one to my sister. And then I'm going to buy Minecraft for her. And we're going to have a series where I troll her. Okay. Do you ever play on Twitch? Um, no, I haven't done Twitch yet. I'll explain more after the interview. But okay. There's just reasons why I don't do Twitch. But I will be doing Twitch soon. Okay. Okay, good. I like love it. Okay. What kind of movies do you like? Um... I'm not a big fan of movies because I just don't like sitting for hours. Like, I don't mind when it's TV because it's some it's a new plot every episode. But when it's a movie, it's the same plot for three hours. Like I can't unless it's a mystery. So, so what kind of TV shows do you like? What What's your favorite TV show? Um, usually I just watch the popular um kids comedies because okay. I'm like that. But I've watched every Simpsons episode at least twice, and I'm re going for a third time. Okay. Storage that's... Wars is fun because that's kind of like a mystery. Oh, I'm I'm friends with Daryl Gambler, Daryl Sheets the Gambler. He's a good friend of mine. Oh, oh my God, he's like one of my favorite guys on the shows. Oh, I could probably get in touch with him and see if he'll come on your show. He might. He's a pretty nice guy. Um, which one was he in? I'm trying to remember. Daryl Sheets. I Darryl think Sheets. he was like in like Texas. No. Uh, no, I'm not sure which one. First of all, California. when the when the when the show first came on, it was just storage wards in one location, and he was like the star. He was on it for years and years and years. Now yeah, I don't know if he's like, still on it. The one he's on, I think there's around thirteen seasons. Yeah, that's the one he's on. Yeah, that's the one he's on. He's a good friend of mine. I haven't talked well, to him in a long time. Texas, um, it might be California. Might be California. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I know that he's uh, like I just saw a post of his on on. Uh, I've had him on our. We've had him on our show two or three times. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Ron turned, Ron turned on the TV and I, he opened up my door. So hold on. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I could hear the TV in the I background. <laughs> yes, but Daryl's very cool. I, I'm also friends with John Lukes, and he's the guy who. Uh, I think he's the guy who does the the bidding thing, like you know where you John? talk real fast. Yeah, in New York, he's yeah. on the New York one. Yeah, I'm friends with him too. I'm pretty sure he does a lot of um, the biddings. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Uh, he was in a movie of a friend of mine called uh, I don't know. It was a zombie movie. I forgot the name of it. Zombie with a shotgun. That was the name of the movie. Yeah, zombie with a shotgun. 
a friend of mine made that movie in New York, and John Luke was actually in it. That sounds like an interesting title for a movie. Um, yeah, it was. A, it's actually not a bad. It's got a video game too, Zombie with a Shotgun, but I've never played it. What are you gonna do? Do you ever watch any horror movies? No, I did. Scared? No, I'm not one of the people who can sit through horror movies. Oh, I. That's Even like horror cool. shows, like people watch strangers things. I'm like, goodbye. Oh no, I love all that. That's my I thing. I just can't. I don't know why. <laughs> it gets to me. That's okay. It's not for everybody. Everybody doesn't like it. I, my room is filled with horror things, so like that's my thing. I see the clown mask in the background. I know. That's from Halloween. Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, it's autographed by the star who played young Michael Myers, who's a friend of your mom. Who's a friend of uh, Nana's and mine. Uh, he's a cool kid. He's not a kid anymore. He's like in his twenties now, but he used to be a cool kid. Well, it's not cool anymore. No, he's cool now too. But as a kid, he was really cool because he was like, you know, chopping people up at thirteen, you know, knifing them and killing them. Which some people like. I like that. I just think it's fun. I don't take it serious, you know. So it's for me, it's just a, an escape. But superhero movies and uh, horror movies are my two favorite, and I collect superhero action figures and horror action figures. Well, superhero mystery. That's how I gotta go. Aquaman was great, even though it was pretty cliche. I loved it though. I think Jason Momoa is awesome. Yeah, I agree. I have a I have an autographed Jason Momoa Funko Pop. Really? Yep. Dang. I, I have an autographed Jason Momoa one. I have a uh uh autographed um Johnny Lawrence and Daniel LaRusso from Karate Kid Cobra Kai. Really? I have an autographed uh Harry Potter. And I have an autographed Stan Lee. It's Stan Lee autographed. Yep. He's not handing out any of those anymore. I know, so I'm happy I've got it. And I also have Kira, the lady who, uh, who plays Kira Dune. She was uh, from uh, The Mandalorian I got recently. Nice. Uh, That's a very good collection. Oh, I have an awesome collection. I really do. I have so much. Look at all. You can, can look at all the stuff. See? Yeah, I see it all. Hang on. Let's go this way. Hang on. There we go. Full costumes, wow. They're actual animated, so they move. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing. I get a new big one every year for my birthday. Yeah, well, that's great. And on that note, we are going to end the show. If this was a really good interview, we got to talk a lot. We got some good questions. And there's one important thing I have to say. My friend, he also started his channel. He has two videos and has already 100 subscribers. You can't let him beat me. One of the videos was him saying, thank you for giving me 100 subscribers. If you think that's not fair, hit that subscribe button so I'll have more than him. Hit the like button, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you, you so much. Jimmy too, because he's my mentor. Bye.